General News is an integral part of any newspaper's coverage of their community. It covers everything from community events like the North Country Fair, an annual event in Arcata, to the more visually mundane things like ribbon cuttings and groundbreakings for local businesses. As small community newspapers around the country continue to go out of business, communities lose this vital connection to the happenings in their community. When it comes to defining general news, it's basically planned, scheduled news events. A good rule of thumb is if it's on a calendar, it's general news. This is an image from an annual event in Humboldt County that's been happening for 50 years called the Kinetic Sculpture Race. It happens over Memorial Day weekend, and it's a very visual event to photograph. There is one thing that's on a calendar, however, that is not general news, and that's sports. Even though it's a planned event, sports falls into its own particular category. Community meetings, particularly community government meetings, are an important part of news coverage for small communities. City council meetings, board of supervisors meetings, school board meetings, decisions that are made at these meetings directly impact their community and include things like how much to spend on fire and police or, or how to deal with the homeless population. But meetings can be very hard to photograph. They tend to be very visually unappealing, often in low lit rooms, and people are often sitting at tables talking into microphones. One thing you should always look for is people emoting or using their hands while they're talking. It'll add a little bit more to the photos than if they're just talking into a microphone. Also, people may be passionate about the issues and during the public comments section may get passionate and may make expressions with their face and their hands that will add to the visual appeal. You can also look for people holding signs or other props while they're talking during the meetings. Elections also fall into general news, and they're kind of broken into two categories. There's the actual election day where you photograph people voting, but there's also the campaign trail. It's important to remember that, especially at the national level, campaigns are highly orchestrated events designed to play well for the cameras. In the textbook, the chapter on general news talks about Damian Winter's coverage for the New York Times of the Obama campaign and how he took a unique approach and then ultimately won the Pulitzer Prize for his coverage. Press conferences are where media is called so that information can be given to the community. In the case of the photo on the left, it was the chief of police of Eureka announcing that they had arrested a suspect in the homicide of an elderly man who was apparently killed in a random act of violence at his home. On the right, he's presenting an award to a woman who witnessed a truck with an elderly man having what appeared to be a medical issue speed into the bay and start floating out into the bay. She and another person jumped in the water and swam out to save the man. And a person nearby at the marina took his boat out and they were able to get the guy out safely. EPD and Humble Bay Fire called a press conference to honor the woman and the operator of the boat. We call these a grip and grin. It's where they hand the certificate, wait for the cameras to take the photo, and they smile. You have to get that shot if you go to the press conference. But as it was wrapping up, the chief and the woman walked over to where they could still see the tire tracks from the truck in the mud in the bay. It connects the viewers a little bit better to the situation than just having that picture of what we call the grip and grin. Another staple is what we call stage for the cameras events. Groundbreakings and ribbon cuttings are often exactly the same. There's going to be some people in hard hats with a golden shovel and they're going to be digging in some dirt. And there's also at the ribbon cutting going to be a group of people. They're going to have some giant oversized scissors and they're going to cut a ribbon. Now, you have to get that photo when you're doing general news coverage. Ribbon cutting ceremonies will often have a reception afterwards. And that's when you really want to get in and get people interacting. In this case, small children playing in one of the display hot tubs at the business. The ribbon cutting was a ceremony to let people in the community know that longtime owner of the hot tub business, Jay Souter, had retired and had sold the business to one of his longtime employees. While they aren't technically on a calendar, Issues in the news, or issue stories, also fall under general news. Issues of homelessness and Jim Nockway's coverage of the opioid crisis are excellent examples of issues being covered for general news assignments. When we shoot general news, there's a few kinds of shots that we want to get, and the first one of those is called an establishing shot. Sometimes called an overall, I prefer establishing shot because people tend to think an overall needs to be like the photo on the right up high, down, over the entire crowd. The establishing shot should, in one photo, communicate kind of the scope and scale 
and particularly what the event is about. On the left, it's a picture of the Samba Parade during the North Country Fair. It happens on the Arcada Plaza, and it's been going on since the 70s. There's also another parade that happens over that weekend called the All Species Parade. Both of those need to have a strong establishing shot so that people in the community know what event it is that you're covering. Next are what we call medium shots. They'll generally have a couple of people and they'll almost always have some sort of interaction. We call these the workhorse in photojournalism. They really carry our stories and our visual presentations. On the left, we have a child at the North Country Fair who'd just gotten his face painted, taking a look at the finished work. And on the right, we have a buyer for a cannabis dispensary in Los Angeles at a meet and greet in Humboldt County, smelling some cannabis produced by a local farmer. Medium shots are, are integral to photo coverage of events happening in communities. They say the devil's in the details. Detail shots are up close, often won't have people's faces in them, and provide a little bit of visual context for an event. On the left, a close-up of some of the drummers in the Samba Parade, and on the right, some stickers with the hashtag Justice for Josiah. They were handed out at one of the monthly rallies that used to occur before COVID, where people demanded that his murder be solved. In photojournalism, it's important to get the names of our photography subjects. These two images are the leaders of one of the Samba parades that happened a few years back. Not only were they incredibly visual, but since they were leading the parade, I really needed to get their name in order to use the photos. This event happens on the plaza and it's always very crowded. And with parades, it's easy to lose people as they march past you. I continued photographing the parade after they had passed with the hopes of getting back to where the parade ends to catch up with them and get their names. I got stuck getting through the crowd and it took me a little longer to make it than I thought. And when I got there, these two people were nowhere to be found. I was a little bummed out, but I remembered that my friend Thad Greenson, who was the managing editor for the North Coast Journal, his wife is a Samba dancer. And not only did she often perform in the Samba parade, she usually helped organize it. And I also knew that at the end of the parade, her and several of the dancers in her dance troupe would go to the alibi to get a Bloody Mary. So I went over there to track them down. And when I found them and showed them the photos, I got some bummer news. She hadn't been involved this year and she had no idea who these people were. And none of the friends that she was with had been involved either. They told me they knew the dance studio that had actually put on the parade this year. I looked up the dance studio and left a voice message thinking I wasn't gonna get a call back. I went back to my studio with my tail between my legs. I was really bummed because without the names, we don't like to run photos. So as I was looking through the photos, however, I noticed something in one of my frames that could help me. So look really close at this photo and see if there's anything you can see that might help me get the name of this person. There's a phone number on the instrument he was carrying. So I called it, got a voicemail, and sent that phone number a text explaining that my name was Mark McKenna, I was from the North Coast Journal, and I needed to get the names of the two people that were leading the parade. The person got back to me in a few minutes, and I got lucky. I was able to get the people's names and the name of this instrument, which I also didn't have. And I was able to use the photos that I wanted to use because I had gotten the names for my subjects. During COVID, it can be a little harder to get names than it normally is. But most people, by and large, if you take their photo, they're pretty good about giving you their names. Most people actually enjoy being in the newspaper. So remember, when you're out and you're photographing events for news, we need to get the names of our subjects. In things like big crowds during protests and if those protests turn into riots, it's okay to get away with not having people's names, especially because it can be dangerous to do so. But on something like the North Country Fair where the people are walking and I have easy access to them, it's bad form not to have their names. Hopefully this will give you a better understanding of the kinds of shots we're looking for and the things that make up general news.